So now let's calculate the burn ratio. Um, and the idea is that we're going to try to create a single image that shows this fire scar rather than relying on this three band composite. And so this is going to, you know, we'll see how this goes. Um, and uh, the first step I'm going to do is go over to the primer and grab the calculate the normalized burn ratio for the snapshots. So I'm just calling these as uh, two snapshots, time one and time two. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. And so the first thing I'm going to do is um, is uncomment the spectral require this um, this uh, module, and then I'm going to uncomment that as well. And I'm just going to actually go back in here and fix this and just say this should say spectral um, to to kind of let you know um, that there's a this object. So before I kind of explore that object, let's go ahead and go over to a new tab and type in awesome. It's another tragically awesome um, community resource um, that is called Awesome Spectral Indices. And it's a ready to use curated list of spectral indices um, that include a lot of band ratios and normalized band ratios like the one that we're using. Um, it's a pretty helpful site. It has this as a handy resource that I like that describes the names for all of the bands of the of the um, spectrum and then uh, what their band number is in the different kind of the different uh, satellites and sensors that we'll be using um, in the class. And so that's that. Um, and so what I'm going to do is go back to here and then just look at this. And there's information about bands, but I want to go into the indices. And what you'll see is that this is a really helpful resource when you're working with um, spectral indices. In this case, we're working with um, NBR. So if we just look at the NBR trade, you can see that, OK, it takes N and S2. Um, and that's something I get asked about. Uh, Sometimes, um, how did we decide uh, when, you know, when you go through um, this stuff, uh, does it tell you here to use SWIR2? It just says SWIR, and it's kind of pointed out here. And so um, the idea is that this helps, um, helps us see that we're supposed to use the second SWIR band and not the first one when we do NBR. And if you're wondering, well, who says, well, there's the reference and here's the, um, the paper and the report from the, from this wildland fire workshop that occurred in 2002. And if we want to look at the report, there it is. And I'm just think if you search this thing, you probably find that that's how they recommend that you use this method that, um, and how you implement this method. Is that, is that fair? So that's just trying to point out that there is a, a chain of that some of these decisions that the decisions are hopefully not arbitrary, but they're they're usually um, you can cite the method um, that you use when you're doing analysis. Um, okay, so that helps us identify S two and uh, and N as the um, as the bands that we're going to use in the kind of the opposite order there. So there is a way to use this uh, module to kind of run these tools from Earth Engine. I'm going to actually get us to implement this um, uh, kind of um, a little bit more traditionally just because it's our first band ratio. So let's kind of let's do it the basic way. And that is going to be in the image here. There is a tool called normalized difference. Um, and you can see that it takes the first minus the second divided the first plus the second. This is such a bread and butter move in Earth Engine that they they just they have a they have a tool for you so that you don't have to worry about you know dot sub subtract dot divide dot at like you could chain all that too but this is easier so I'm just gonna highlight this and copy it and come over here and say I'd like to do this and use this um, this tool and I'm gonna um, say that I'm in this container NBR test. I'm going to take, and I think I'll start with the post burn, and then I'm going to say dot 
normalize difference and I just need to do my band names and it's getting late and I'm forgetting, but okay, N and N should be first and then S2. And then if I go over to here and remind myself, okay, we're working with Sentinel. So N means N there, thank you very much. That's B8, S2 is B12. So I just need to type in B8 and B12 for here. Um, but remember, they have to be strings. So there's B8, comma, B12. And then the last thing is to kind of look over here at the um, normalized difference and just then note, oh, actually, they want it to be a list. Okay, then I will put these in square brackets um, because that's the data type that the tool is set up to take. Um, okay, and so then I'm going to um, run that and see if it gets mad and it doesn't seem like it's getting mad so then i'm going to kind of try to look at it by saying map add there mbr test and then this is going to be um, for viz parameters i'm going to say that the member in lecture i said that the min was negative one and the max was one and then this is my mbr test and then i'm going to say false and i'm going to hit run and let's see what we get. Um, if I look at this and I go to MBR test, what is now black should be what was purple here. Is that fair? Um, so why don't this is a good use of transparency so that it doesn't have to redraw each time. Um, but do you, uh, if I just change the opacity, what was purple is now kind of black. And so it looks like basically I've been able to condense the image that's in these um, multiple bands into just a single single image, which is just nice. So then um, let's go ahead and try to package this up as a function. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna say, let's make a function called make burn ratio. Um, that's gonna take an image and then it's going to um, kind of use this as, and again, I, I, I like to tab the inside, but whatever, but you know, you, to each their own. And then it's gonna return that variable. So I can say return MBR test, but let's just call this output again. And I'm gonna change that to output. And so this image is gonna take for any image, so then I just have to remember to change that to some kind of an image. Um, and it's going to do the normalized difference of B8 and B12. And so let's go ahead and try to apply this. So if I say make burn ratio, so I'm saying the post burn ratio is going to be equal to the make burn ratio, and I'm going to feed it an argument, and that argument is going to be post burn, right? And if I run it, is it mad yet? No, it's not mad. So let's go ahead and try to look at that layer. And that's going to be the post burn ratio. And then again, the min was going to be negative one. The max was going to be one. And this is going to be the post burn ratio. And please don't display it. And so if I go to here, you should now see unless it got mad nope it's not mad it's just late let me hit run again and uh there are my layers and if i have my mbr test and now i have my post burn and i change the opacity they look pretty similar change the opacity they look pretty similar and there's some d2 there okay so then i'm going to hit save because we're doing pretty well and i'm going to start cleaning up so um, that was handy reference, but I don't need to keep looking at it. This, I've tested it, and I don't need to worry about that. This is set up, and the one thing you always want to check when you do my method of, of kind of working it out first to see if it works, wrapping it into a function, applying the function, and then comparing the output to what you made the first time, is that if you forget to change this to that, it can, it can mess you up. Is that fair? So I've just made, I've, I've set this up pretty well so that I'm gonna hit save and cut out and allow you guys to then 
make a, another burn ratio, but for the pre-burn year. Um, so it should look, you should be able to use the make burn ratio um, and then display it on your map, um, but you shouldn't get this black scar, you should get something else. And so um, I'll see when you've done that, um, join me in the next video.